what's going on everybody down here with another video and today i've got a really really good one for you so over the few days since NHR 19 came out, people have been speculating the market's starting place is considerably lower than what you would think it would be, with a fresh game going on and such. While that may be generally true at this point, a few points can be made about how EA could really get back to the basics and have a strong market again. Without further ado, here's how EA can strengthen the hot market in the NHL video game series for this year and for the future. Number 1. Re-adding Collections Now, stick with me here. There's a bit of cause and effect domino type deal going on here. The first idea I had pertaining to how EA could make a strong competitive market is re-adding collections. Now, if you're new to the NHL series that didn't play hot back a few years ago, there was something kind of similar to sets in the form of collections. Now, collections did a few specific things. Here's what a collection looked like. Shout out to Xtech for allowing me to use this NHL 16 clip in this video. Basically, you'd input every player, jersey, and logo from a specific franchise and be rewarded with gold mini packs. These gold mini packs generally held multiple gold players, some fatigue and contract cards, jerseys, and other items of that nature. These items were untradeable and like other packs as well, allowing you to potentially end up pulling some insane players. There's a few examples of some decent packs here, with an 86 Patrick Sharp and 87 Dustin Bufflin pulled, both of whom were generally very good players in NHL 16. Now, what would collections do for the market? Let's go back a second and look at this clip from before. One of the main positives of collections on a market standpoint was the ability to keep player prices high and relevant throughout the year. As new cards came out, such as Movembers and November, price values stayed so strong through many months of the year, even when there were better versions of the card out. Those better versions of the card held significant value as well, but the importance is the base cards. If there were collections able to be done with cards such as Crosby, Malkin, and other superstars, there would be a creation of competition throughout the market. The re-addition of collections would be huge for the market, and as you can see, Crosby goes for 666,000 coins here, Malkin just under 300k as well, both sticking some insanely good value for months into the year, as this pack opening was done in November of 2015. Even past the stars, there's an added need for lower end players too, giving more competition and demand for those players as well, giving quick sell value players now a reason to be on the market consistently for the span of the game. Basically, with the re-addition of collections, there would be a significantly higher sense of competition on the market, and would likely have even more coins being used on the market on daily basis as those 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or even 11 reward packs you get from buying up the entire roster could absolutely change your team for the entire year and give you a reason to grind to try to complete every team possible. This need to get the packs would raise the market prices consistently and thus help the market flourish to what we haven't seen in many years. Next up, we have price ranges. People used to complain about price ranges on FIFA all the time because they felt as if they were being confined in terms of card price, but it ended up being a very, very solid idea in the long run. What are price ranges? Simple. In FIFA, they have a market that has a low price and a high price for every single player on the market. Now, this is one addition that happened mid-year in FIFA back in FIFA 15, done primarily to combat coin selling, something that EA and NHL has had a major issue with. Now, while that's all fine and dandy, I think there's a much, much better usage for them in the marketplace. Now, as you see here, this is the video of Crosby, Ovechkin, and McDavid space cards on the market as this video is being recorded. Imagine this, except with a floor and a ceiling set in terms of price. Why is this a good idea? Here's an easy explanation. Certain cards should be worth X amount of coins the entire season. That X is simply to be determined by EA, generally allowing them to set the basis of what the market will look like for the upcoming year. That being said, this doesn't have to define the market whatsoever. Specifically, if collections were added back, I'd expect them to add a price range to the market that basically puts a coin value on each collection. Pulling a Crosby, Ovechkin, and McDavid at this point is pretty tough, but it's a doable task over enough packs. Adding a price range that also guarantees that those base cards being used for some unreal collections hold value throughout the year too, which is very, very important. Now, you might be asking, what do you do for special cards? Simple, a quick system can be created depending on a few things. Player recognition, synergy details, as well as just straight overall and other statistics can all be considered here, along with a multitude of other details. A player like Sidney Crosby can be given a reasonably low floor on the market and a ceiling that's considerably higher than anyone would get for that player. What changes for the market? First, even as lowest, Crosby wouldn't drop under, say, 300,000 coins. With how easy it is to get coins for those who play the game at a high level and dominate comp seasons, that'd be a reasonable enough price. For someone who isn't great but has the time to grind souls and such, it's also a pretty reasonable price in my opinion. The beauty of having the floor is, essentially, nobody wants to sell a player for the cheapest possible price. If they did add collections back, price ranges would be perfect to ensure players go up for the right value, on top of stopping people from buying up certain players and charging an arm and a leg for them to be purchased. Now, my third and final idea is more grind options. Now, before I get into this section, I will say that I believe EA and NHL has done a decent job getting solo challenges up to speed, but one thing I'm really missing is a more long-term grind. This is something that the NHL team could really do better on, starting off with taking a page out of Madden's book with their journey solos. One of the rewards, that's the great part of it. 
You are guaranteed an 88 overall Carson Wentz if you complete Journey, regardless of anything else. Wentz is a very solid Madden quarterback, and at 88 that's usable for a large portion if not the entire year if you play the correct playstyle. Top of that, you get the following. 6 gold player packs, 6 gold premium packs, 1 untradeable elite player pack which has an 82 overall or higher guaranteed, 1 untradeable elite player pack which has an 86 to 88 overall player, and then an elite player pack that could give you anything from an 80 to like the 95 to 99 overall player. So chances are you'll end with at least 5 elite players, which would be comparable to like 5 85 pluses at least for the, for the long term grind. For those who can't spend money on the game or just don't want to spend money on the game, this grind would absolutely be worth it, on top of getting a good amount of coins per journey solo. Now, as with any market and other ultimate team modes, adding coins to the market and diversifying the base of those using the market will add for a much more predictable and thus more reliably priced market, with more coins and more players in the market for high end players than before, with only those who spend real money on packs trying to buy the high end players, there's an entirely new creation of supply and demand that's severely lacking in today's hot market. One thing that I think would really help get more people into solo challenges, thus putting many more coins into the market, would be a diversification of solo challenges. Most solo challenges now are 3 period games with requirements galore, why not change that and make that more intriguing for the community? That's where NHL Moments Live comes in. Anyone who played NHL in like 2013 to 2015 knows NHL Moments Live, and while they weren't the most rewarding, they were fun, and most important, real. Having that real aspect would be good, especially in solo challenges, providing players a legitimately fun challenge to grind, such as maintaining a shutout with a specific goalie like this NHL 14 challenge involving Ben Scrivens, or changing history like helping lead the Golden Knights to a Stanley Cup victory. I feel as if a small change like that could encourage thousands of new gamers to try to hop in, have some fun, and then generate more users of the market and more demand for cards everywhere. Thanks everybody for watching this video, it's been Donnie. If you could subscribe and like this video, share it around to your friends, that would be great. I hope to have another video up tomorrow, so make sure that you enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you all later.